Hello, everyone, and welcome to Joy Score Live. I am one of your hosts, Corey, and with me, of course, is Kate. Hi, everyone. You're going to have a great show tonight. Yes, absolutely. Uh, just a little bit of background, as usual. The Joy Score project began with Dr. Bob's 2011 book, Joy in Health and Happiness, and that was awesome. aimed to help his students and those around him learn about joy. Now, Joy Score is a new book, website, app, and games, and they're all going to be coming out later this summer. And, uh, you know, just Joy Score intends to identify nine principal elements that impact your ability to uh, perceive joy. Um, actually, normally we would be picking one of those elements and just going into that, but we've got a different thing today. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about something that's not directly in the book. It's about young adults who are parents or parents-to-be. Later in the show, we will be joined by one of our experts who knows all about this. But first, Kate, you've got some studies that we got to talk about. I do, everybody. I wanted to learn more about our target uh, people. So I found this article. So all parents-to-be, they all have something in common. They're all expecting a child. Mm -hmm. So we found some interesting studies. 2016 from cdc.org so the first interesting fact was birth rates for women under age 30 declined in 2016 whereas rates for women 30 and over rose the general fertility rate declined 1% in 2016 to 62 out of every 1,000 births aged 15 to 42. The rate is down 11% since 2007, the most recent high. So we can really see that women are having uh, babies more likely in their 30s versus right. below that, that they are 30. Yeah. And that they're having less kids in general yeah i mean it's it's inter it's a culture shift right i mean it's not just like oh it just happens to be that way like it, it's kind of we can see that in our culture like right. personally you know it, i'm 30 and people around my age there i know people who are having kids but there's also a lot of people coming from like la where they're like very career focused or sure. they're trying to do other things and that's that's just part of the culture i mean i'm sure it's not that way everywhere but that's what i see so that's fairly reflected in these studies. I think that what I've learned recently in school that most school programs teach us is that there, there's some, you know, some basic things that kind of affect the, the childbearing. Mm -hmm. um, so one, of course, is birth control. Birth control has become yes. more well known and larger, less taboo in the last years. Definitely. Another one has to do with, you know, is the country in war? What's going on with the current economics? Mm -hmm. uh, we're not farming anymore you know we're not having we're not having we don't need to have 10 kids in fact 10 kids sounds extremely expensive yeah that definitely economics plays into that and also another big thing is that women are having careers nowadays yeah more so, so than before more so than before and so perhaps it it seems like you know we want to get school out of the way you know behind our career for a couple mm -hmm. of years then we're willing to take a break in a right. sense to have yeah. maternity leave which is awesome there's there's absolutely no problem with that we're yeah. just here to discuss some of the reasoning behind it so yeah. some more interesting like like what we were talking about the average age of first-time moms is rising npr.org says that the average age is past 27 and continues to rise so i think that it's on the average age of first moms is closer to your age group than my age group which yeah. could have been different even just as early as like 20 30 40 years ago yeah i mean i'm not thinking about having kids anytime soon so maybe that's telling i don't know I, and or kinda, i'm just a loser i don't know that that could be just me the con uh, the website continues to say that all this data is to show that first-time parents range from early teenagers to well into their careers Yet, many parents may feel scared, worried, or lonely in the process. So, we are now going to talk to an expert about some of the reasoning behind, you know, like, is, uh, is there a possibility to find joy in your early 20s? Right. That's different than perhaps traveling, partying, rock climbing. Like, is there a possibility to find joy in your 20s? We're going to find out real quick in just a minute. We're going to take a minute break. Thanks, everybody.
Welcome back to Joy Score Live, and uh, you know we are going to be joined by our guest, uh, Braden Phillips. Welcome back to the show. Welcome uh, back, Braden. <laughs> ha- uh, thanks, you guys. I feel like I've taken up residence here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, we appreciate it. Um, we have to mention that Braden was our guest on Actions and Wealth earlier, and we're so grateful to have you here with us again. We had such great conversations. You know, we had to drag you back in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be here. It's uh, it was interesting to listen to some of the statistics that you were just talking about i think we're we're seeing the uh, the cultural uh, evolution of of our society mm-hmm. uh, throughout history as as civilizations have become more and more stable the birth rates have gone down for a lot right. of the reasons that you talked about yeah. and uh, we're seeing that uh, reflected in the numbers that you quoted uh, I think the the idea of parents uh, at at a later age is something that's more of a uh, an American phenomenon mm-hmm. right now. Definitely, and, and, but it it does raise some interesting questions. Yeah, I I think you know going back to what Kate was saying, do you think that young adults finding uh, like do you think that they find parenthood to be daunting or preventing joy for their younger years? That's a it's a good question, but I think there it's a two part question and it gets a two part answer. Sure. The, the the is is parenthood uh, daunting? Uh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> uh, but is is it uh, is is it keeping them from from finding joy? Uh, I don't think so. I think that that there's always trepidation as sure. you go into a, a new phase of your life, mm-hmm. and, and if you think about it, you. You grow up at home, you go to right. school, you go to college, you come out of college, mm-hmm. you're getting your first job, you're establishing yourself, you're you're doing all the fun things that uh, yeah. that you've always wanted to do. The traveling, the partying, the rock climbing, the rock, yeah, exactly. college stuff. <laughs> yeah, the, and and uh, you've got the money to do that because you've you've got a new job and we're not spending money on diapers just yet. Well, we're spending that, money but, on but that's drinks. that's the point that I was going to make. At that, at some point in this process of having all this sort of superficial fun, uh-huh. uh, you find a significant other. I mean that's that's mm-hmm. ideally the way it Some works. Some people do. <laughs> well, if, if you're going to get to the uh, to the kid stage, then then you, you need to find a significant other in most yeah. cases. Right, we're not so, starfish. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> so well, not. so at some point, your your focus in life changes, and and I think what you're asking me is, can uh, can the young people find joy in in all of the fun stuff that we talked about, and then. Can they make that transition into parenthood? Yeah, or uh, can relationships they have cake and eat it too as well. You well, know? and and I think that the the <laughs> answer is maybe. Yeah, I think uh, it goes I from think, person to person. I think that one of the reasons that uh, the Bob wrote this book mm-hmm. was to help people understand what you have to do, the work that you need to do. To make mm-hmm. yourself more able to perceive joy, absolutely, and and I think there's a there's a little bit of difference between the joy that comes from within, right, and the the euphoria or the happiness that you get out of the the rock climbing and the hiking and the jumping out of right. airplanes or whatever else you do for fun, going out dancing every night of the week. Could it perhaps just be finding like a happy medium, like still traveling, but you know, bringing your child and going to the beach and spending time with your child at the beach well, or going. To Disneyland and doing the kid rides. And sure, I, love space that. I, I think rides. I think that that's absolutely possible. But you're you're sort of jumping over a pretty significant change in life, right? Where yeah. you've you've gone from this uh, post college freedom mm-hmm. and uh, and going out with uh, with the gang every night to finding a significant other, and you you sort of wind up going with him or her. And and then eventually it becomes just you guys. It's yeah. not. It's not. You're going out with the with the the whole pack well, anymore. It's a, a mind shift and yeah, a responsibility it's, it's, shift. It's sort of an evolution. It's it's a maturing process. Mm-hmm. You're you're ready for that change in your in your life, and and so what you're what you're looking for in terms of of joy and mm-hmm. happiness is a little different. Yeah. It's not as important to go out and do those things that you you think are so much fun 
in your early 20s, yeah. in your late 20s. They may not even be fun anymore. Well, it, uh, my, my guess is it's probably still fun, but it's not. Uh, it's fun to do with your significant other. If, it's right. the, if you found mm-hmm. Mr. or Miss Wright that, uh, that's going to, to be the person that you want to go through life with, uh, you want to go out with them. That's mm-hmm. where that's the person that you enjoy uh, being with, and you can derive uh, that that personal joy from. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, there was a saying that uh, some scientists use to explore the unknown. It's we don't know what we don't know. Uh, do you think that that statement applies to young adults? Absolutely. Uh, and and the reason I think that is because you come out of come out of college with your degree and whatever you've studied and you think you got the world by the tail yes you pretty much know it all a little cocky <laughs> and and <laughs> life has a way of uh, reinforcing the notion that maybe you really don't know all there is to know or definitely <laughs> and and early on I don't think you recognize how much there is out there that you don't have experience with and and this that's where I think a, a book like Joy Score has applicability to to young adults. Mm-hmm. I don't see them uh, mm-hmm. sitting down and poring over this this thing. Most uh, people, but <laughs> I but I could see them uh, taking some of the tests, becoming aware of what the elements are, mm-hmm. reading a snippet or two, maybe yeah. reacting to to some of the tools that are suggested in the book just to, to consider some lifestyle changes. As you're going along in life, as you mature, you, you recognize that there are some, some holes. Right. There's yeah. something, something isn't complete. And so the more you recognize that, the more you start looking for how to fill that hole. What, what is it that I'm missing? How do I find that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think you've used the word perception and perceive yeah. many times. And that's so important because when you don't know what you're missing, then you might be ignorant to it. But then when you feel something and then you open up your mind to see that mm-hmm. or, or learning maybe, hey, these, these are things that are out there. Look for them. Then suddenly it's it's expanding your entire outlook on life. Absolutely. Yeah, we talked in in the book. Uh, Bob talks about the fact that Joy Score is very individualistic. Mm-hmm. It, it it's yours. Yeah. And and so when you read the book, you're you're learning skills for to apply for yourself. Mm-hmm. I think that that although it's not written that way, I think the book can be something that you can share with that significant other in your life. Yeah. <clears throat> because the elements impact each of you. They may impact you differently, but they impact you nonetheless. And if you have a better understanding of how your significant other reacts to some of these elements, uh, it's going to help you establish a better relationship with him or her. So I think that the the potential for this book to be sort of a, a desk reference, if you will, almost like a textbook in, out of college, mm-hmm. Uh, for for young adults as you're as you're going through the the phases of your life and developing relationships, uh, I think I think there's some real strong potential there. Yeah, you know, um, I think just the whole benefit for Joy Score is that you're looking inward, you're analyzing or trying to understand yourself better, and when you can understand yourself better with someone else also experiencing that for themselves, and then seeing what you both are learning from it then you get to know your uh significant other hopefully in a deeper way as well and that's just part of you know understanding yourself but that's what joy score is intended to do well joy score i I think on the surface looks like it's it's to help me understand myself but what i'm suggesting is that it can be the same tools can apply to a couple yeah and you can use those almost as as a preliminary marital counselor (laughs) if you will to kind of help you better understand each other and and understand how uh each of you reacts to to different things i think this is actually the first time that i've ever like thought of this and this is really i'm i'm intrigued 
like you're right this this could eventually down the line be more of a stable way of like you know getting to know pros getting to know someone and sometime within your conversations of getting to know someone like you know having conversations about well, how, what do you what do you think about what do you think about self-esteem what do you think about uh, actions what do you think about wealth and that could become a way to more appropriately understand your partner and and eventually in a deeper way get to know your partner I, I'm kind of like mind blown by this concept right now. Wow. <laughs> well, that's uh, thank you, that's Brandon. Good. Yeah. Well, that's so <laughs> sold. So, we, so we've had one sale. All, all right. right. Good. I guess well, we can wrap it up. There, all right. right. That's all we needed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, why don't we get a little bit to the expectant parent type thing? Uh, okay. Because you know we've talked about young adults moving into like young adults who might be expecting soon. What do you think that you know? What do you think should be they should be thinking, uh, you know, with each other or like, you know, with experience. I mean, unfortunately, you know, we don't have, <laughs> neither of us have had kids in our lives, but nope. <laughs> you have uh, experience with that. Yeah. And, um, so I, w- I will tell you that, and I think most parents would agree with this, that uh, as as you learn that, that as a couple you're pregnant, um, a lot of things change. Mm. Now, it, it, the with the the female, there there's all sorts of hormonal changes. There's the whole, you know, pregnancy, pregnancy, the the weight gain, the limitation of, of physical exercise, you know, perhaps morning sickness, you know, the all of the the stuff that goes along with with the process of Just physically, of, uh, yeah, the physiological stuff. Uh, but that has uh, an an emotional impact and. Uh, if you're a guy and and it's your wife that's going through this and you aren't uh, aware of those changes and you don't appreciate the significance of those changes uh, you're going to exercise one of the elements that we talk about in the book which is called stress you're going to impart some real significant stress to your relationship because you're not empathetic you're not sympathetic right. you're, you're not supportive um, and you just understanding the fact that you are your lives are in a in the start of a state of flux. And as a female, like I've obviously never I've never had a child before, but I can imagine some of these thoughts going through my head as I'm stressed out. Like I'm getting fat. I'm not eating the food that I used to eat. I can't do the yoga class that I used to do properly. I don't fit in this dress. Like my next door neighbor looked better when she was pregnant on her third child than I do on my first. Like yeah. I can just imagine that there's all these thoughts that are going through my head. And if my husband or my significant other partner, whatever, if this person can't relate to me you know, or try to emphasize, obviously that person may have never had a child either, but if they can't even make the effort, then I'm just going to feel like crap about myself. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the whole thing is the empathy. And if you don't put yourself, try to put yourself in their shoes. I mean, you can't, being literally same, understand yeah. <laughs> exactly what they're feeling but you have to try to meet them halfway at least or go you know and understand so so when i talked earlier about couples when you find your significant other and maybe you you use the the joy score book uh, as a sort of a a text to work through the development of your relationship i think if you if if that happens the likelihood that there's going to be empathy and and sympathy and understanding mm-hmm. and support is far greater because you've already established that relationship. Yeah. Mm. The the actions that that the man takes, the husband takes in that relationship hopefully are going to be thought out a little bit more and not reactive more sensible. as we talked about before. Mm-hmm. And and if you're doing those things, if you're if you're Practicing all of the the tools that are laid out in mm-hmm. the book for your own joy, mm-hmm. you're going to help your partner find some joy in the process that that she's going through. I, I think it's also part of the whole. It's the whole part. It's the whole concept of being on an airplane. You know, like if you're losing oxygen, they tell you to put the mask on yourself first before you assist others around you. Is that kind of like what you're saying? Like you need to work on it first and then assist your partner or I, th- I, I would, uh, yes, uh, but I think if you can work on it together, 
mm-hmm. before you get into the, the assisting pregnancy. the child. Assisting. No, no, no. I, but this is even before the kid. This uh-huh. is this is you got you you go from your relation significant relationship. You get married, and then a year or two, three, four, five later, right. you decide to have a kid but or, things or, happen. or things happen and you're going to have a kid. If you've worked on some of those issues beforehand, mm-hmm. it's going to make dealing with the challenges that confront you as a, uh, a new parent to be mm-hmm. a whole lot easier. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, I, we were just discussing some of the questions beforehand and it's like, yeah, like if you don't take time to just think about those things. If you rush into it with no thought whatsoever, that's going to be a really rough time. Like you have to try to prepare yourself, I would imagine. And these to, things are that. so critical. Like we all know what the divorce rate in America is right now. Yeah, it's bad. Or we know the amount of children who live in single parent homes or it's a huge it's an epidemic, honestly. Well, and and I think you have to remember that well, I, I talked about all of the physiological changes and and emotional and psychological changes that the woman is going through. there w- there is a natural human tendency to want to blame somebody or something mm-hmm. for the condition. And as which, a woman, in, I, I, in can which, I can which relate. In which you find yourself, <laughs> and and there it's is all your fault. there. Well, as a matter of fact, it is it kind is uh, <laughs> there is a singular responsibility that the husband bears for the pregnant condition in which the wife happens to find herself. So, so you, I mean, you have to be willing to recognize that you're uh, as a as a prospective new parent. Mm-hmm. You're going as the as the husband. You're going to have to be ready to. To acknowledge that that There's level of be responsibility a range of and emotions and and, and random help grocery support. store runs. Yeah, you want to support. <laughs> it, it, it's the old movies about the guy running out to get dill pickles at eleven o'clock at night to, to <laughs> go hope with I'm the not that person. to go with the pint of ice cream that <laughs> oh, the, God. The, the wife. Please wants. don't let me be that person. <laughs> it's always pickles but too. but you never know how you're going to be. But That's I true. do. Th- but I do think that the. Uh, you know, working through some of the some of the tools that are identified in the book can help bring you closer. It can give you an exercise that you're doing together, mm-hmm. and you're recognizing that the objective here is to find the joy in this transition of life that you're going through. So, are and, you saying things like exercising together, like par- parts of the book? So some of these are like breathing techniques, yeah. fitness, uh, all, all, both of you being aware of what you're eating, your nutrition, all of the parts of the all book of that are stuff. important to be doing Actions, together relationships, as a recognizing the stress that's going right. to be there, controlling your thoughts, uh, you know, thinking before you talk. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> who does that? Yeah. Not, well, not me. <laughs> well, that becomes, uh, it becomes more important when, you, when your significant other is going through her own period of stress. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I say that very knowingly, but I, I got to tell you, when when I was going through this, God, could I have benefited from from this thing? I mean, I yeah. I literally didn't have a clue. And, and no I, one really does. And there's no there's no real manual for uh, newlyweds or parents to be. There's there's no checklist of stuff that you're supposed yeah. to do that's going to make this all easier people are too complicated for one well and list. you're you're also on the on the f- first steps of a process that's going to be 18 or 20 years long i mean you're going to have yeah. this this kid is going to be with you for a while you you're taking on some amazing responsibilities so if you can set the stage for that with 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 a togetherness and a, and a working uh in a in a mutual support kind of way, yeah. I think it makes that transition to those next eighteen years a whole heck of a lot easier. Well, I think also what's important is not just simply the doing of the things. Obviously, that is, but also mm-hmm. just you know listening and understanding and uh, being emotionally supportive. I mean, you you've already said that, but you know just to reiterate that because I think that's really important because it's not always about finding a solution to a problem. But just trying to give some kind of support and understanding that can be very yeah, beneficial. Let me, let me jump back things. to something you asked earlier the, yep. about the scientist who says you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. And and in this in this situation of pregnancy for a couple, you're you're, you're no you know if it's the first child, 
You haven't gone through this before. You don't know what's coming next. You don't mm -hmm. know what the normal reaction is. You know what other people's reaction may have been because you've talked to them or you've But you've, it could them. be but, different, but it's, between it's different sisters, yeah. between sisters, yeah. between mom and daughter. I will tell you something interesting that I've observed, and, and this goes into the, to the post-childbirth uh, arena too. Mm -hmm. But I think that the the men of the the of your generation, Corey, mm -hmm. uh, are horrible are, people. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I'm not maybe the other generation. guys in your yeah, generation. Yeah, right, right, right. They, the, but I think they are much more engaged in their uh, the the lives of their kids, and the, and supporting their wife uh, in in the post childbirth arena and and even. Prior to childbirth, interesting, uh, and I think part of it is is education. I think part of it's awareness. It's not a, as taboo anymore. Well, when I was when I was a, a parent, uh, mm -hmm. you know, guys didn't often change diapers. Um, yeah. Guys didn't often. So gender roles we are. Yeah. It, the, there's dissolving. a gender norming, and I, I think there's. Uh, we went to a. Uh, my wife and I went to a party with, uh, it was a christening party for a, a young couple uh, that were friends of, kids of, a, of friends of ours. And uh, there were a number of couples there and w we sat back and looked because at one point all of the wives, all the moms were, were sitting, were sitting around a table mm. drinking wine mm. and all of the guys are standing out in the yard, you know, rocking their babies. That would not have happened 40 years ago. Uh, so right. there's so, so there's been evolution, which tells me that this generation is likely much more receptive to the notion of using tools like JoyScore to help make their lives more rich with joy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're moving into the uh, post-birth time. So a lot of people describe, uh, well, at least from afar, describe the times of childbirth to be potentially scary and intimidating and how do you think that like something like joy score could help that transition be more joyful when it's a time of as you said stress I not mean, sleeping not two too many diapers yeah. <laughs> yeah i you know during the process uh immediately after after childbirth i mean there's the the if you're if you're in the delivery room with your wife uh, you have and appreciation for the the physical effort that that is required. Uh, oh man! <laughs> and and so your wife is is tired. She's been hauling this twenty pound weight around <laughs> for for a long time, wow. and she's going to come home, and you're going to expect her to be instant mom. Well, that may not work so well. I mean, mm -hmm. she's, she's she's exhausted. She's exhausted. There's going to be some things that that uh, the the spouse has to has to pick up in terms of responsibilities. Right now, the the challenge is that if the guy doesn't know anything about what he's supposed to do, doesn't appreciate the the involvement that he's supposed to have, then you the the mother gets upset because you know her baby is being mishandled. So I think that there the, again, if you've if you've established a rapport and communications based on some of the elements that have d are discussed in in the the Joy Score book, it's going to be a lot easier to to objectively look at this yeah. mm -hmm. dynamic situation that you you find yourselves in as a new parent. So with these understanding of the elements, which seems to be the real key factor to this, what are sources of help that new parents, whether it's right before childbirth or it's during childbirth or it's, what can you name a couple of sources that could be helpful for, for people so in my generation uh the name dr spock was uh <laughs> was huge you guys probably don't even know who he oh, is don't insult me like that are you for real right now Dr. Spock obviously is only from the new reboot of Star Trek and I, not from which, the original which one. Which one was it? Yeah, no, this this is not the Vulcan. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this is this is the guy that uh, that advocated spanking. Oh. And and had, he was Dr. literally I think Spock would also There was a Dr. That. Spock who wrote the the definitive book on child rearing back in the 50s. Oh god. And and a most Wait, of, hold on, pause. A man wrote a book on childbearing? Of course. 
Why did a man write a book on childbearing? That men, makes no men sense. Men have written books on every topic. So and they oh. want to tell you what to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, men are men are very good at that. They they. Uh, I don't good. like it. <laughs> we're good at being bad at things. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we were talking uh, off the air about uh, another old book I mentioned, Doctor Spock, and I'm going to get back to your question about okay. what the resources. I'm not going to forget about it. But there was uh, there was another book that that came out maybe 20 years ago that you may or may not be familiar with, and it was called Men Are from Mars and Women Are from Venus, and the premise of the book was that men and women look at things very differently. Okay. And and they they uh, the communication women women love to talk about things. You get two or three women together and they can talk and talk and talk. You mm-hmm. get two or three guys together, if there's not a football game on, there's no reason for them to be together. <laughs> Cuz they don't talk and talk and talk. So this this book highlighted the differences between men and women and the need to understand that in order to establish good relationships. Joyce Gore, in a way, provides some of the tools for bridging that gap between mm. the genders. Yeah, which seems to be a really important thing in 2018. This is like a, <laughs> this is like a thing that's. I mean, some people call it feminism. Some it's, people call it. It's been an important thing since uh, Eve showed up. <laughs> uh, how right. long ago was that? That was a couple <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Only a few. 7,000 years ago. <laughs> so so back to your, your original question about what resources do new parents have. You know, one of the wonders today is uh, the search engine. The internet. Yeah. You can find videos on YouTube or various other mm-hmm. uh, social media sites that explain how to do anything. Young moms, And they've got to, they, they tell you, you know, if, if you want to, you know, take a carburetor out of a '54 Chevy. <laughs> you know, there's a Someone's there's a it. there's a couple of videos on that, and there are videos about how do you change diapers, how do you breastfeed, how do you do all sorts of things, and I think that uh, that taking advantage of some of those resources, mm-hmm. looking at them together as a couple, mm-hmm. uh, and and deciding which of the proposed that, that methods work. Uh, closing the gap yeah. between genders making is that sh- making sure that that what I see and and what my wife sees are kind of focused on the you same thing. You want to be on the same page when it comes yeah. to changing diapers. And I can't tell you how many times that hasn't been the case. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> I don't want to know. There's not only one single way. <laughs> and and I know that I'm not the only guy uh, around that uh, that feels that way. Yeah. There's a lot of different opinions on how so, to So what things. what are some other resources, though? What else do you recommend besides the Internet, the web of sites? Well, I think that, uh, you know, there are um, there are organizations. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if, for example, uh, you as the mom decide you want to breastfeed your child. Right. Uh, there are all sorts of organizations that... Uh, advocate and support and provide resources for breastfeeding. They have breastfeeding education classes. There's, there's uh, changing diaper classes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there, there, there really are. Uh, so I think that there are there are plenty of places to find information. Information, though, is isn't necessarily the answer. You right. you have to weigh that information and make a, a an educated decision about how so you're you saying want to that apply every it. like uh what do they call it? old old maids tale the old wives tale old wives, wives tale. tale that you hear may not necessarily be the truth or mm-hmm. everything that your aunt may say you might I will uh, you say might see that the, the stuff that the old wives say and the stuff that your your old aunt told you probably have more factuality than a lot of the stuff you find on the internet. Well, I was oh. going to say, you know, family experience <laughs> is probably also a big resource, right? You, yeah. You have well, to... Well, yeah, family and friends. I mean, it... it people you trust. One of the, one of the things that, that is comforting when you're going through any of these new situations mm-hmm. is finding out that you're not the only one going through it. <laughs> Thank God. So, so uh, you, you'll have friends, hopefully, that are, that are new moms also, maybe a, maybe a couple months ahead of you in this, mm-hmm. in this process or a year or two. And uh, 
taking advantage of those friendships and talking frankly about some of the challenges that you're having. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with postpartum depression? That's, I mean, that's a yeah. huge issue in mm-hmm. in our world today. It goes completely un- undiagnosed sometimes too. You don't even well, know it's, what's going it's, on. Well, uh, in, in, it's in a sort of a perverse way, mm-hmm. postpartum depression is like post-traumatic stress syndrome. Yeah. Giving birth is a traumatic experience <laughs> on the female oh, body. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that changes. And, and you're not prepared for it. You don't know how you're going to come out of it. Mm-hmm. You've got this tremendous responybility that you've just taken on. Yeah, not just physically. But no, the whole... The whole everything. Uh, Shebang. Physical and, and, and physiological, <laughs> psychological. Uh, it's a complete uh, set of challenges for you. Yeah. And you're looking for help anywhere you can find it. Yeah. And I think you can find it on the internet. You can find it in friends. You can find it in your in your church. I like the idea of your classes you're talking about. Yeah. Like, go, even just like, like there's there's classes for when you're pregnant, like yoga. There's, a lot of yeah. those, yeah. And, and there, there's also... Uh, classes in Lamaze, which is the natural childbirth right. technique yeah. that the husband and the wife can Both participate, participate in together oh. because it prepares the husband for going in to coach <laughs> the wife in the delivery room. Is that the is that name derived from a, a Spanish thing, Lamaze, like La and then Maz, the moms? Uh, you're not. I don't no, know any No, of course Spanish. not. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I did want to ask... I, I'm not going to dignify okay. that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I get I, it now. <laughs> okay, good. Someone dignified it. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm blonde. You <laughs> I, I, that's not dignified. But go ahead. Um, you know, we, we wanted to ask a little bit about your personal experience. Just, you know, like, how was it for yeah, you? Yeah, do you... You know? I mean, just, I, we know your father. You have one daughter. So yep. tell us tell us more about that. Yeah. I didn't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I... I'm, I'm picking up that people, that's the normal... I, most I, people don't. I, I really didn't. And, you know, it's one of those things that uh, we only had uh, one child. And I, th- I, I think that, you know, had, had we had another, I think both of us would have been better prepared for it and, mm-hmm. and probably reacted differently to it. But uh, I think that uh, I was just terribly ill-prepared for the challenges associated with it. I, I don't think I was as supportive as I could have been. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that there's a lot of things that I, if I had it to do over, I would have done differently. Do yeah. you, can you think of any specific things that you wish someone pulled aside or maybe, you know, you going to like your, your, pre, your previous self or whatever, like you need to remember to do this or you need to do this. You have to shake them while yes. you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, like so writing I, a letter to your old self. I mean, this is, this is going to sound uh, kind of strange perhaps, uh-huh. but, it, but it all comes down to communication. Yeah. It, mm. It's, it's, ta- it's ta- recognizing the issues and talking about them and, and recognizing that, that the Mars and Venus thing, you know, mm. that we're, we may look at, at, an, an issue and and you might look at my it wife well my my wife thinks it's a big deal and i don't that's not good yeah you, you know, have to be they're, on the same page you need you need to resolve that ambiguity and come to an agreement maybe it's not quite as bad as she thinks but maybe it's a lot bigger than i think and yeah. so so i think being able to to have uh, an honest discussion about that Perhaps again, using some of the tools that uh, mm-hmm. that are highlighted in the in the Joy Score. Yeah. Even though the tools are focused on an individual, there's no reason that those tools can't apply to to couples. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that you hit it on the head there. Like honest communication, not just like, oh yeah, this is whatever. Like, this you is have, great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, like you can't <laughs> live in denial about something that is a big deal just because you think it might inconvenience. Like you're with this person you got to be completely open about well you things. you you say that you can't do that but uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you that you I mean, can rather that you shouldn't <laughs> I'll yeah. well there you go one. yeah <laughs> it it would have uh, the the situation would likely have a better outcome yes if, uh, if you did it differently yeah and so I think I think that's the the, the big lesson learned for me that uh that I just I just wasn't in tune with yeah. with what was going on. I didn't recognize the magnitude 
of uh, of what was happening. Well, that's with any relationship, right? Is open communication. Yeah. Like you, if you we we talked know, about that in yeah. our Joyce Go Live episode of because relationships not only are they it, it first starts with yourself. Like yeah. You have to be honest and open with yourself because you can yes. lie to yourself. Yeah. You may look in the mirror and say, "Wow, I look." I look so amazing, but in reality, girl, get a different dress on. But you know what I mean? Like you have I've to be, said that before, you have to be honest with yourself. It's good you never said that. <laughs> before you can be honest with your significant other, before you could be honest with your family members, before you could be honest with your your colleagues or your peers, before you can be honest with your dog. Like you have to be honest with yourself first. Yeah. Totally. Before, like I think that's the number one step. Because then you're not. You might think you're communicating the truth, but you're not because you don't you're lying even know to yourself. What the truth is. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, it, it's. Uh, uh, that's why I said I think all of the elements in this are book so important. have have a, a huge potential impact. And if if you just read it over um, once, it makes you aware of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then as you confront things and think a little bit, like you just did about the relationship stuff mm-hmm. and the the importance of of self communication, self honesty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, being a a precursor to any sort of honest communication with a person with whom you're going to have a relationship. I think that's key. Yeah. Well, do you want to... I think we should move into our videos, right? Yes, I would love to move into our videos. So one of our team members, Jody, actually took the time to interview a couple different groups of people and was able to learn some interesting... uh, Perceptions. I, I can't think of the right word. Some interesting views and insights. on insights. Thank you yes. of joy and the effects of young parents. Okay. So with that, we're gonna now go ahead and ask our techies in the back. Hey, techies in the back, let us know whenever you're ready to go ahead and play video number one, and then we're gonna listen to it and then Braden, if we don't mind getting your insightful sure. uh, opinions or not opinions, but just kind of you know being able to discuss yeah. some What's of the take? topics. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Whatever whatever your opinion opinion is on that. So let us know when you're ready, guys, in the back. Jody's actually one of our team members. She, uh, We went to community, go- uh, community college together. Oh, nice. Uh, up in Washington. You know, so uh, throwing back. Is she back, still up there? Yeah, she's oh, up in okay. Washington still. Hi, guys. So I am here with Karen. So the first question I have for you is what does joy mean to you? Joy to me is deeper than happiness. Happiness is affected by my circumstances, but joy comes from God alone. Mm. And so no matter what my circumstances no, and no matter how hard my day is, yeah. I can still have joy. Yeah, it's like deeper rooted than mm-hmm. just circumstances. And the next question I have is, what are the ways being a parent brings you joy? I find joy in so much from being a parent. Yeah. It really has changed my life, but honestly, One of the most joyful things is seeing my kids enjoy the little things. Mm -hmm. You know, I think taking them to the zoo will be fun and they're amused by the rocks on the way in (laughs) or something like that. And it just reminds me that, you know, in a really bad day or something like that, there might be a little thing that I can pull out, you know, notice the small things in life. And that really just kind of changed my world. Um, The last question I have for you is, what is some advice you wish you knew when you were a parent to be? I wish more people had told me it's okay to not be perfect. There's so much focus on moms being perfect Pinterest moms and, you know, having your kid in bed by seven and always having the house perfect and things like that. And I felt like a failure for a long time as a mom because life isn't like that. Nobody's life really is. But I just wish there was more focus on that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right, Brayden. So we're back and you're finishing up watching the video right now. So we were able to get this sweet lady's perspective. Can you kind of talk us through a little bit what you think about that? Uh, First, I think she was asked about joy and happiness, Mm -hmm. and uh, and I think she was right on. Uh, I'm sure she collaborated with uh, Professor Bob. (laughs) The uh, she she said that that happiness is is more of a superficial, and and joy is something that comes from within. And, and I think that's a point that we've been making throughout the, yeah. the book and uh, in all of the, the podcasts that you've had. I think there have been uh, discussions that, that relate to that subject, that joy is something you, you find in yourself. The, the second uh, thing that she uh, was asked about, I believe, was... Uh, parenting and uh, what the joys within parenting yeah and she talked about find if, uh, 
you know, regardless of how bad the day is, when when you come home and you you see your baby or your young child smiling and they run and and uh, grab on or they they get uh, they're sitting outside and they get enthralled with a blade of grass or a little stone or something that the the sense that uh, that she had that you know she had created that yeah and uh, and that you that's know, a cool feeling I bet yeah <laughs> I'm excited I mean, it, for that feeling yeah it's so I I think uh, again she she recognized that that there are unexpected pleasures that you get uh, in the in the process of of going through the day with your child yeah well I mean that's that's love right I mean that's a a different kind of love than romantic mm-hmm. love it's it's family love and that's not something you necessarily will experience in the same way with your parents or siblings like that's just that's something like, this, like, I created this that. this is and, like and that's this is my kid and even if well, it's not not not, on, it's, not only that I, I think the the sense that you created that sure. certainly is is uh, along the lines of what you're talking about but I think the fact that that she got joy mm-hmm. from watching the little things that her child yeah. did, uh, you know, it wasn't getting on the ride at, at Disneyland that that made With her the roller coaster that gave her joy. I need to stop listening. This is going to give me child fever. <laughs> well, but it but it was it, it was the little stuff that uh, that they do that uh, and they get the smile on their face Aww. and yeah. and and it just sort of makes your heart full with joy Mm -hmm. i mean that sounds corny but that's that's what it is but that that's just the the nature of being a human i mean you know it when you lack that the ability to love someone like unfortunately some parents in our society do then that's not there and then they don't understand that but for most people when you have a child even if it's a or an adopted child or or any kind of child Mm -hmm. you take that and you love that child like anything and, and that that is far and beyond something that, that you couldn't understand before that I think well I think what you just said uh, would uh, would be wonderful if it was universally true yeah. unfortunately not not everybody does share that perspective but you know I told you about the the, the generational change that that mm-hmm. I observed at, at the party mm-hmm. I, I think that more young men in uh, in this day and age are are prepared to be a part of their children's lives yeah. in ways that their fathers never were, yeah. and and Sometimes I think that's we have a, to learn I think from that's the a wonderful thing. Elders. I think that's a wonderful thing. Right now, mistakes. Uh, I think the third point that uh, that this uh, lady made uh, when she was asked, you know, what what she uh, would do differently, uh, she talked about the the striving for perfection, mm-hmm. and and striving. For for perfection is based on what you think other people think of you. You're you're you want to be you want to look like you got your your stuff together. We that want you, to be that perfect. You want mom. you want it to be right. absolutely wonderful. You mm-hmm. you're like the 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 functional TV families, not the the dysfunctional yeah. ones that we which we've we already got. know is fake. And but. and <laughs> the 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 simple fact is none of us are ever going to be that that perfect. Can't we're, be the we're, we're humans. Thank God. I and, hate that pressure. <laughs> so, so if you can recognize that up front and, and take that pressure off yourself and, and know that you're going to make some mistakes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no there's a res- we, we are, we human beings are pretty resilient. We can bounce back from a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you do something and, and your, your kid is uh, the unfortunate beneficiary of something bad the, right. the kid will forget that and the kid will grow up to be a wonderful human being and you'll yeah. learn from the mistake but you don't feel this tremendous pressure that that everybody expected you to do this thing perfectly well it, it's interesting the idea of perfection i mean this isn't exactly the same but there's the um well, i guess it's actually pretty related i grew up in orange county and uh, I went to a school that was 60% Korean. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the family cultural things that they took from by being first generation immigrants was like, you have to be perfect. You, you can't, a, 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 no, that's not good enough. It has to be an A plus 
or you are being punished for I this. grew up in the same household. I can relate. Yeah, and, and that's <laughs> so, difficult. So let me ask you, I mean, you guys have, have shared that. I think that's wonderful, but but what kind of pressure did that put on you? An extreme well, I, pressure. I didn't have that pressure, but I all, a lot of my friends did. So I saw that, and I thought, that's weird, but like that, it, that's what it was. So it, it was mentally a huge thing for me. Well, and, and if you think about what pressure is, mm-hmm. it's... Stress. stress yeah and and you know the the book That'll talks build. about how how you can relieve stress mm-hmm. and one of the ways you relieve it is to recognize that the that it's there. Uh, expectations that you have mm-hmm. are, are unattainable Unre- unrealistic impossible yeah exactly so so if you if you set some more realistic expectations know that you're going to screw up because you're yeah. human and f- figure out how you yeah. in in the case of parents how are you collectively going to pick this ball up and and run with it again yeah. uh because you're going to have to you're going it's going to happen many many times mm-hmm. yeah well it's part of that uh parenting style right like you can go with the like uh hey i i, I love you all the time and like saying like oh it's okay don't worry about it and that can be too lax and then on the other, the flip side, it's like, you have to be perfect. You're getting a spanking. I'm never saying I love you. And yeah, I'm never <laughs> saying those things. And, like, I think there's a there's a balance it's between. All like, you can't just coddle kids, middle. but, like, you yeah, can. Yeah, and, you gotta and, find it, and a lot of that stuff comes from, from the experience that you had. Right, exactly. You know, if, Are you going to punish your kids like you got punished or something yeah, like God, that? So, no. so uh, <laughs> I'm going to give you a, a, a strange analogy, but it really does relate. Okay. Uh, Early on, in one of the first time I was on, I talked about the the fact that I went to the Naval Academy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the Naval Academy had uh, hazing as a part of the the ritual for the the first year plebes that they were called, <laughs> and the people that were the most difficult to deal with, that were hardest on the plebes, that were most demanding, mm-hmm. uh, uh, hardest, uh, least fair were the people that were really screwed up when they were plebes. Yeah. And yeah. so they got... They want to punish you. They got because the I was worst. punished, I'm yeah. going to punish and, you. And be, yeah, exactly. And and that same met, uh, mindset applies, I think, in parenting. Yeah. Mm. You, you, can't, you can't... You don't have the tools, if you haven't read Joy Score, <laughs> uh, to, nice. to, uh, to look at the way you were raised, the parenting style mm-hmm. that you grew up in, and and evaluate it and decide you know what of that style worked that i can incorporate into the Mm -hmm. way i'm going to parent and what didn't work so that i don't do that well on this note now for the guys in the back we are ready to watch video number two yeah hi guys so i am here with Rachel. And we're going to ask her some questions that have to do with joy and parenting. So the first question I have for you is what does joy mean to you? Joy kind of means this effervescent, bubbly, happy vibe that just kind of welcomes people and fun. Yeah. Okay, the next question I have is what are the ways being a parent brings you joy? Being a parent brings me joy in being able to see my kids pursue their passions mm-hmm. and learn who they are and helping them grow into um, their, their best happy self. Yeah. Yeah. I love to watch them when they're laughing and they're playing. Yeah. But on, also when they're working hard on something that they're like intent about. Yeah. Yeah. And the last question I have is, um, what is some advice you wish you knew when you were a parent to be? <laughs> so I recently <laughs> saw this meme and it said, uh, you're the only one that can give your kids a happy mom that loves her life. Wow. And that one really was like, yeah, that is true, right? And they look back or whatever. Like, that's what I want them to remember. Yeah. Um, and a parent to be, I think, uh, you know, don't worry about too many things. Yeah. Really, the main thing I found is just having those little traditions. Is really what kind of brings uh, joy in the relationship. Yeah. Right. Yeah.
bring you guys together. Like, yeah, yeah. Just little things like, you know, we come to Menchie every Wednesday. Do you really? Yeah. It's wow. a little tradition. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I love that. you know, little things like that. Um, but they don't cost a lot. But yeah. They mean a lot. Yeah, especially. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. Think about that perspective. Well, I think this lady also uh, felt that uh, joy was was something that came from within, but I think her sense was that there was a little bit more um, similarity between joy and happiness. It was, mm -hmm. There was a, a little bit more of a superficial nature to it than than the internal thing, and I I I, I, I disagree with her a little bit there. I do think that the uh, you know, there is a difference between joy and happiness, and it's you know, how far, how far inside do you have to go to find the joy? <laughs> the, well, oh, no, go ahead. Well, I mean, yeah, it, 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 since not everyone has read Joy Score, but also may not <laughs> agree, you know, because a lot of people do find, you know, a lot of the simple pleasures to tide them over a little bit, right? It's like a little Band-Aid. But, I mean, with parenting, you, you have to dig deep or you're not going to find something lasting, right? <laughs> Well, it's you know, parenting is a is a twenty four seven three sixty five job. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's not something that uh, at the end of the shift you you know you, you sign out and you go home. Uh, you uh, well, some people try. Uh, yeah, well, you, you can't you can't dial it in. Yeah, uh, it's it's something that uh, you, you're going to be a parent uh, as long as your kid lives and as long as you live. And, and it, uh, it's certainly more important in the formative years uh, when the kid can't take care of him or herself. Uh, you know, parents have a lot more responsibility, but as the kid grows and expands uh, the, the scope of his control over the world that he's in, uh, you, know, you, can, you can back off a little bit, but you're never going to get away from it. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be watching uh, your kid. And I, and I think this, this lady in the, in the second point uh, about you know, what, what gave her joy in being a parent mm -hmm. was similar to the first uh, lady. The that, little uh, things? That it's the little things. It's, it's watching the, the, the concentration that her child had uh, you know, playing with a toy or... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know the the f exploring the the first step or being able to get mm -hmm. up uh, to stand up and then fall down and laugh about it. Uh, you know those are those are, are precious moments that uh, that you know whenever you think about those as a parent, it it does uh, evoke a, a certain amount of joy. Mm -hmm. uh, just just the memory of that. Well, it means a lot more. When yeah. It's that that situation perfect well thank you we're gonna now go ahead and go on to we, the we missed the last point though oh sorry oh. about that you're, you're uh, uh, running I mean, short we can... on time Braden. oh okay <laughs> well the 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 last point that that she made about things that she wished she'd learned mm -hmm. uh was, was kind of similar to the to the first lady that uh it not so much the perfection but just recognizing that there's there's so much that you don't know mm -hmm. and and yet you need to be prepared for it but she talked about the importance of that mutual support. She talked about having uh, a tradition, the, the Wednesday night date night or whatever it was that she and her husband mm -hmm. shared that allowed them to keep some, some of their time that wasn't yeah. uh, just uh, with the kid. You can't mm -hmm. sacrifice everything blindly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still a dynamic relationship. Right. Uh, you just got an extra person in it. <laughs> extra dynamic Awesome. All right, guys, in the back, are we ready to watch the third video? Hi, guys. So we are here with... I'm Mike. Diane. So the first question I have for you guys is, what does joy <coughs> mean to you? Well, I think joy is kind of two different things. Like Deep-seated sense of peace and then also an excitable emotion. Yeah. Great emotion of excitement when you're happy and you're, you're celebrating other people's happiness. And mm -hmm events in their life. So it's kind of two things for me. I think my definition of joy is uh, being right relationally <clears throat> with my friends and family and mm -hmm. uh, my heavenly maker, um, knowing that I have salvation and an eternal uh, perspective on life and I'm right with that, right with God, right with his word, uh, right with my children and um, knowing I never have to look over my shoulder um, 
relationally with people by being truthful and uh, having a clear heart and conscience just uh, it gives you an inner joy because you know you're right with people. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Uh, the next question I have is what are <coughs> ways being a parent brings you joy? Seeing your children um, develop into who they are as a person and also seeing them gain their successes in life mm -hmm. internally and externally, but just becoming all that they are in God and becoming the greatest person that they could be. That, that brings you the greatest joy, seeing your children be successful and happy yeah. themselves. Yeah. I think um, just doing a good job being a parent and uh, raising children who are um, good people, righteous people, and uh, that you can enjoy them, you can trust them. Uh, I think uh, that uh, as a family testimony, just knowing that your children are good and People talk well of them, friends, family, uh, that they're trusted, mm -hmm. and uh, you being a part of that and instilling those values in them that uh, make them the people who they're developing into and who they are uh, just gives you real satisfaction and joy. And the third question I have is, what is some <coughs> advice you wish you knew when you were a parent to be? I think I, I wished I would have known how much I really need to pour into my children to to enable them to know how much they're loved, not only by by me as a parent, but also by God and the Lord, just that they would know love and to um, just instill that into them, how much they're loved and appreciate it. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, for dads, it's easy to kind of pass the buck and say, oh, the wife will do it, the wife will do it. <laughs> but if you want your children to, uh, if someone would have told me the, to really do it right and have great kids, dad, you've got to be involved. And uh, uh, that has to go pretty deep and it's a pretty big commitment. And that's really was uh, good advice that I got. <clears throat> I did, you, know, you do the best you can. And uh, that's a great piece of advice. Dad, you've got to be involved. You've got to be there because it takes two to uh, make great kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you, thank you guys for your time. Sure. You're welcome. All right, Brayden. Well, what did you think about? Well, I think it's it's interesting because you got an older couple uh, that are providing perspective. One, I think this was a very religious couple. Mm -hmm. uh, it's obvious that their religion played a huge part. The spirituality uh, that we talked about uh, a couple sessions ago, I think, was was a big part of their life. I think what they said was was consistent with uh, with what we we've been hearing all along. Joy mm -hmm. comes from within. Yeah, you, you want to be a good parent. You want your kids to to grow up uh, and develop and be successful. Those are the things that that give you joy. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, you heard the this father talk about the importance of, of being involved and, yeah. and I think we've talked about that too so I think all three of the the interviews uh, were were pretty consistent with with what I would have expected uh, people to, to say um, I think they made a good case for for joy score awesome well thank you so much Brayden for taking the time to join us today it was really great to have conversations with you again please come back soon <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure Brayden will get back soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I Thanks wasn't going to say it like that, but... <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and take it back to our last break, and you'll hear from us in a second. Welcome back, everybody, to Joy Score Live. Today we talked about 
parents to be. It was really interesting having these awesome conversations with Brady, but now we have over here, we have Jacob. How are you doing today, Jacob? I'm good. I'm good. Jacob. I'm gonna go ahead and pass this to you so you can read it. Oh, Ooh, there we you. go. Sorry about that. Slow down, buddy. <laughs> Hi, I'm a little tall. There, there we go. <laughs> How tall are you again? About six five. Oh uh, my god! All right, Jacob. So, what did you think down, about? Down, oh, you're supposed to slouch down even more. more. All right, we're just gonna. No, I'm just kidding. So, what did you think about last week's show? And is there a way to view it online? Uh, last week's show was really well. I liked it. I liked the crash and bang that we had. With the, with <laughs> that was falling. Fun. That yeah, was the behind awesome. The scenes. No, Absolutely I'm kidding. Terrific. Um, you can actually view it on our Facebook or YouTube page as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, what is going on with today's experts, and is there any way that we can learn about them before the show? Oh yeah, so today we had Brayden again, and mm -hmm. every time we do have someone, a guest on our show, mm -hmm. we have a little biography of them before the show, a couple hours before the so show, so the audience, you guys, can know who we're talking about, Yeah. so you guys are comfortable with them as well as you know them too. So where... Is there a way to view? Like, where where do we find this little set of bio? Or yeah, yeah, social, social media, media on Facebook at Joy Score Inc. and on Twitter, Instagram, wherever. So just to recap, media. so you got the Facebook page. We have Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. oh I knew LinkedIn there was a well. LinkedIn. Where's the MySpace page? That's what I was. Oh, oh, God, oh, thing. Okay. <laughs> I think that's all music now. MySpace. <laughs> I don't know. Awesome. So what's going on Thursday? Thursday is our International World Blood um, International World Blood Donor Day. So across the world, people um, donate about one point one hundred and twelve point five million. Um, well, it doesn't say how many ounces or quarts, but it just says uh, blood donations. There's a lot of blood. blood. There's, a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of blood being Good. donated. So I guess a hundred and 12.5 billion blood donations are collected oh, okay. globally a year. That's a lot of blood. That's a lot of that's blood. Kind of, that's man, kind of vampire gross. heaven. I mean, yeah, uh, I, I mean that's awesome that people are donating their blood. Are you O positive about that number? or? I, I don't know. If I, I think I'm a little O negative <laughs> now. Um, oh, good God. <laughs> so what do we have going on Friday? Friday, uh, one of our viewers from South in, in South Korea messaged us a video of their loving goats. Goats? So Goats. Friday is normally our Joy Score Pet of the Week. Of Hashtag course. Joy Score Pet of the Week. Of course. And that we want people to message us, you know, their pets. And hey, you know goats what? Is wow. a pet. I'm so excited. You know what's funny is where I'm from in Seattle, people rent goats mm -hmm. to eat all the blackberry bushes mm -hmm. and like new. Isn't your part of Seattle kind of famous or something else? Never Enumclaw. <laughs> Enumclaw, <laughs> Washington. All right, Jacob. So finally, so how are we starting out next week? Uh, next week uh, on Monday, we're, our little prompt or tip of the day is how to start a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, have, have talking to somebody can be really nerve wracking, especially if you don't know them and if they're very attractive or, you know, you're very, you know, you want to talk with them. It, it's a little hard to it's start that off. Yeah, it's intimidating. Yeah. Perfect. Like. Some people tend to ramble, like me. I'm rambling right now. I'm a little <laughs> nervous. I got very two attractive people in front of me right now, so it's hard. I know to one, talk. maybe. I don't know. Yeah, you're the one, Corey. Okay. Oh, okay. I got you. There you That's go. what I was trying to Woo! say. <laughs> All really? right, wait, wait to bring the temperatures up in the studio, Jacob. <laughs> okay, like they were no already problem, hot in no here. Problem, no problem. All right, well, thank you very much, Jacob, for talking to us a little no, bit about anytime. social media. So, wh what was, what's the at again? At Joy Score Inc. At Joy Score Inc., everybody. Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter. LinkedIn and YouTube. Uh, I actually, uh, tonight's podcast will be uploaded to YouTube sometime in the next few days. So, on that note, thank you very much. My name is Caitlin Thorley. We have Corey over here, Always Jacob over here in the here. corner. Shout out to the guys in the back. Thank you very much for your tech and Joy Score out. Mm -hmm.